Welcome to the National Fish and Wildlife Forensics Laboratory in Ashland, Oregon. Our laboratory works very much like a police crime lab uh, in that we identify evidence and we try to link suspect, victim, and crime scene together with that evidence. The big difference is that our victim is a non-human animal. I'm Ken Goddard and the director of this laboratory. When our agent sees evidence at a border, a custom center, wherever, that evidence will be packaged and shipped to us. Our job is to analyze evidence collected for wildlife law enforcement investigations. Our laboratory primarily supports wildlife laws in general, specifically the Endangered Species Act. Sadly, we're the only full-service crime lab for wildlife in the world. We'd like not to be, but that's our reality. The illicit wildlife trade is huge. It's probably in the neighborhood of 17, 18, 19 billion dollars a year. We're certainly impacting the trade, but it's a desperately difficult job. Here are some of the scientists that help us solve crimes against animals. Our veterinary pathologist is Dr. Becky Kagan. My job is to autopsy all of the animals that come in here and try to figure out why they died. Today I have uh, two birds. They're both bald eagles. They're wild animals. They're found dead. My job is to figure out was there a crime involved. We can do CT scanning here at the lab. We take photographs. We do alternate light source exam to help us solve the puzzle of why this animal died. One aspect of our work that's typical of a crime lab is we compare a known against an unknown. For us to identify, let's say, a feather or maybe to identify the bones, we would compare that against tissue from a known animal or to a skeleton. And the fellow responsible for our huge collection is Johnny French. Our collection is 35,000 specimens, give or take. Everything that we have here has either been donated or was seized in customs. The uniqueness of our collection helps us kind of keep abreast of what we see in the wildlife trade. Most of the time we have to remove meat from bone in order to examine specimens or to get them into our reference collection. Easiest way to do that is take the carcass and chuck it in the flesh-eating beetle tank. After the beetles have finished with the carcass that we threw in there, we'll wash them a couple of times and then the bones are ready for the collection. Heading up our genetics section is Dr. Mary Curtis. The genetics team is important to the functioning of the lab because we look at items that other parts of the lab can't identify. Items that might be crafted to the point where you can't tell what their origin is. So we have access to over 40,000 individual tissue samples in our reference collection that we use to identify different species. One of the more interesting people in our lab is Dr. Pepper Trail, our ornithologist. I'm an ornithologist, a bird expert, so I look at bird evidence and use reference specimens to compare to evidence items to confirm the identifications. The kinds of evidence that we receive is incredibly varied. We receive everything from complete dead carcasses in good condition to just bags of bones. I've identified over 750 species in the course of my work here, which would be a pretty good life list for a lot of birders. The magnitude of the international wildlife trade is staggering. Every day into our laboratory comes uh, the remains of dead animals from around the world, and someone needs to provide the information needed to bring wildlife criminals to justice. It's sometimes a sad job, but it's a very important job and I'm proud to be part of it.